Chapter 4, 6 Years Old to 8 Years Old One day, when I was 6 years old, I came to know a truth, a hard truth that would stay with me for the rest of my life. I was in the farmhouse alone, and I happened to look out the screen door where I saw our cat. She was crouching close to the ground and utterly still, except for her tail, which switched like a metronome side to side. I could see the cat's muscles roiling beneath her blue-gray fur. Her eyes shone fire upon a mouse that sat roughly a foot in front of her. Neither animal moved, and I didn't either, but I could feel my heart beating. The standoff ended when the mouse finally moved and the cat caught it with a swift, clawless swat. The mouse stopped. After a brief moment of stillness, the mouse moved again. The cat met it with another swipe, and once again the mouse stopped. This happened many times. Then the mouse began to back up slowly, and the cat went into a deep crouch, and then a mighty pounce. The mouse was trapped between the cat's two paws. It struggled to get away, but its efforts were futile, and the cat brought its face close to the mouse, who, in a desperate bid for freedom, bit the cat's nose. The cat's face momentarily recoiled in astonishment. Then the cat's green eyes flashed black like the wing of a crow, and her teeth tore into the mouse, and I could hear the tiny bones breaking as the cat's neck swung from side to side until the mouse was still and limp, but the cat's neck continued to swing. Then the cat slung the dead mouse into the short hay and strolled away. This last moment was what surprised and frightened me the most. This whole endeavor had nothing to do with food, and this is when I learned that hard-scrabble truth. There is a difference between what a thing is and what it appears to be. A thing can appear to be content and happy as it lies with you so close that you feel its purr in your belly. And if you don't look through the screen door and out into the world, you might never realize that the thing you think you know and love is another, more dangerous thing altogether. Once I learned this truth, I began to see examples of it everywhere. A picture hung on the wall of our parlor. In it, a woman was taking a shirt from a clothesline. She had clothes pins in her teeth, and it was windy, and a boy was tugging at her dress. The woman looked like she was in a hurry, and the whole scene gave me the idea that just outside the frame, full dark clouds were gathering. But that was not what it was. It was paint. So I decided right then and there to see the picture as it really was. I stared at the thing long and hard, trying to only see the paint. But it was no use. All my eyes would allow me to see was the lie. In fact, the longer I gazed at the paint, the more false detail I began to imagine. The boy was crying as if afraid, and the woman was weaker than I had first believed. I finally gave up. I understood then that it takes a powerful imagination to see a thing for what it really is. That was when I became very interested in magic. A magician can make you believe in appearances even if they are impossible. And lucky for me, old Jack was a magician. Also, he was the only one of the old men who paid me any attention. Once I showed my interest in magic, he began to perform his sorcery for me regularly. He could make a penny vanish from his hand and then find it in my ear moments later. He could turn a penny to a nickel and a nickel to a quarter until you couldn't understand why he wasn't the richest man alive. Old Jack could do it all. His tricks amazed me. But I knew they weren't real, even at that young age, because I had seen the cat and mouse and thought about the picture in the parlor. So I asked old Jack to teach me, but he refused. Can't do that, Sprite. A magician never tells his secrets. But when he said that, it was always with a winking sort of smile, and I understood that one day he would tell me. Two years passed, and as I grew older, I was eager to become a man. On the first Sunday of every month, just before the sun rose, all the men in town would convene at our home to go hunting with my father and my older brother. I wanted to hunt more than anything else, but I was not allowed. In my father's eyes, I wasn't old enough, 
and couldn't be trusted with a gun in the woods. Even though I could already hit a can off a fence post with a twenty-two, nine times out of ten. It wasn't fair, but I didn't make the rules, so I had to stay home with the women and old Jack. See, old Jack never went hunting. Not once, not ever. And the men teased him without mercy. But old Jack, he'd just smile and say, Wish I could, boys, but I'm getting behind on my work. But everybody knew that old Jack was never behind when it came to work. One Sunday, I asked old Jack straight out why he wouldn't go hunting. And his answer made me wish I hadn't asked. He said that when he was young, he was the best shot in the county, and he could shoot a squirrel's eye out at forty feet. And so when he was drafted into the war, they made him a sniper. He told me that he had killed and killed for four years, and he said that that kind of killing changes a man. He knew they never would have made him kill all those men if he had not learned to shoot so well as a boy. He said when he returned to Canada, he felt apart from other men and felt closer to little children who hadn't yet learned to hate. And I asked old Jack if he figured he could still shoot a squirrel's eye out at forty feet. I don't know, old Jack said. I love squirrels now. I've even trained one. I feed him corn right from my hand, and he climbs onto my shoulder. Now that's got to be kept a secret, Sprite. Because if another man found that out, I'm afraid that he would kill my squirrel and dry it on the porch till it was ready to eat. I knew old Jack was right about that. The men in our town love to eat squirrel. Where is the squirrel, old Jack? Well, he lives in the tool shed with me. Falls asleep right on my belly. I guess I'm the only fella on this blessed earth who has a squirrel for a pet. Will you show him to me, old Jack? I can't do that, Sprite. He might get spooked and bite you. Maybe I'll just teach you a magic trick instead. So old Jack finally showed me how to produce a nickel from behind a boy's ear. And once I knew how it was done, once I knew the trick for what it really was, I became angry. I made old Jack promise that from now on he would only perform his magic tricks and never tell me the truth behind them. Things were changing fast for me. The night of my eighth birthday was a night like any other. I was sitting, listening to the men, when Angus McGregor started talking about the war. Well, I could tell Angus had uncorked the jug early that day. He looked drunk as a boiled owl, and his story didn't make much sense. He said how much he hated the Krauts and that he had once shot a surrendering soldier in the back, and he told us he wasn't sorry for it, neither. None of the men said anything for a while after that, and finally my father broke the silence. I'll get us another round of beers. When I looked over at old Jack, there was a tear in his eye. I'd never seen that before, a tear in a man's eye. He got up and quietly left the house, and I chased after him. When I found him, he was sitting under the blighted maple tree. You sad, old Jack? You thinking about the war, I asked. Old Jack just sat still for the longest time, like I wasn't even there. It was like he couldn't hear or see me, like he was hearing and seeing different things. So I just stood there, and after a good long time, old Jack looked up and seemed surprised that I was in front of him. Well, hello, Sprite, he said. What's the matter? You look kind of down. Well, I just didn't like Angus McGregor's story, that's all. Say, Sprite, I know what'll lift your spirits. Well, I know the very thing. How'd you like to see a trained squirrel? I was very excited. But you said you could never show him to me, old Jack. I haven't got the money to get you a true birthday present, Sprite. This'll have to do. So we walked down the lane together, toward the North Forty. The beneficent moon hung low and shone bright, leading us to the shed. When we arrived there, I was so excited I couldn't wait. I pushed the door open and rushed inside, looking for that squirrel, but I couldn't find him. I realized my mistake that he'd only come out for old Jack. So I glanced back at the open door where old Jack stood, but his back was to me now, and I was blocking out the light of the moon. I suddenly remembered that I'd read somewhere how the light of the moon was just an illusion, and the moon was only a cold, cold stone. I watched old Jack look from side to side before he turned his gaze on me, and his eyes flashed black like the wing of a crow. He closed the door, and the inside of the shed went black. Then I heard the bolt. I forget what happened next. 
Chapter 5 8 Years Old to 13 Years Old I Forget Oh, man! I haven't had something this hot, creamy, thick, and goopy in my mouth since my Uncle Tommy okay. pretended he was hot. Okay. Oh, here's a good one. Yeah, well, the joke is a bit wordy. Do you have any other color jokes? I mean, he's just blue and yellow. Did you just say, do I have any other colored jokes? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Fucking Jimmy the Greek over here. <clears throat> I don't, don't want to... <laughs> Jimmy the Greek. <laughs> How about Jimmy the Greek gets kicked out? for being a racist. Meanwhile, they call him the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> TV. All right.